All right, so this talk is about Visual Studio Code tips and tricks, and I pulled out several uh, tips and tricks that I think are the most useful. I'm going to give you references to other pages that will help you expand on that, because in reality, your IDE is your most valuable tool in front-end web development. And the better you get at manipulating it and using the, the different uh, shortcuts and keystrokes, the better that you will be, the, the more proficient you'll be. In fact, it's almost like a badge of honor at work to be able to do lots of tricky things with your IDE. So take that as you want it, but in any case, it can make you more efficient. So I'm giving you some links here. Um, so basic editing in Visual Studio Code, definitely want to look through that. And even though this is just specific to Visual Studio Code, it is the most used IDE right now. And most of the IDEs have similar types of uh, operations. So once you learn these and get used to these, you would, and you, if you move to a different IDE, you would look, look for these things too. So here's the, the Visual Studio tip, Tips and Tricks page. I also have cheat sheets here for Windows and Mac. There's always a little bit of difference between shortcuts, um, keyboard shortcuts for both of them because of the command key versus the control key. So take a look at these and we're going to cover some of them that I think are really useful, but there are a lot of them and it's up to you how much you want to dig in. I don't like to try to overload myself with doing absolutely everything, but I do pick out a few that are useful. Now Emmet is a, is a shortcut for writing HTML and it requires a library and it's built into VS Code. So we're going to look at some of the things you can do with Emmet and there here is an Emmet cheat sheet. So um, you can download it if you want. Um, it'll basically you can write, um, so if I use um, this kind of syntax nav ulli it'll write out all of this code for me but i'm going to just show you a couple things that i like to use uh, so let's see i have vs code open here and i've got a test html and so let's take a look at um, what you what you can do so here we have a scaffolding html and this is really useful so just hitting exclamation point tab can basically write out your basic HTML um, code for you. So this has, you know, the, the and you, this is what you always want to start with, and then your own code would go inside the body. You would probably update the title. You might add more meta tags and your the author. You might add on to this, but this is kind of the required starting point. So that's just using the exclamation tab. Um, uh, you can also do things like once you're in here, um, you can use Emmet as as that cheat sheet shows you nav ul li, and it will write out the HTML that you need for that. So it's a way to so you don't have to type so much. Um, let's go back and look at some more of these things. Uh, another thing that's really helpful is if you have some text and you want to wrap it with an HTML tag. Like, let's say I have a whole bunch of text. Um, let's just say I've got just blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. And I decide I want that to be in a paragraph. So I can just highlight the text that I want to wrap do control shift p and wrap individual lines with abbreviation and i'll make it a p tag and that will take care of wrapping it so rather than trying to you know type you know a p tag on its own and then go and find this stuff and copy and paste it i can just wrap the selected text and put any kind of tag around it so that's really helpful, and uh, I believe that is the same whether control whether you're in Mac or Windows. Let's just make sure. So right now I am in a Mac, and no, it's Command Shift P in Mac. So I know a lot of you are on Windows, so Shift Shift P for Mac, Control for Windows. So generally. 
it's going to be there are a few cases where it's control always whether you're Mac or Windows okay open terminal and this is it's really nice to be able to work in this terminal I've got it open right now but if when you first open your Visual Studio Code it probably won't be open you can do everything from the menu here but like I say that's a little bit slower I don't know um, and you can see that it the menu gives you all of the keystrokes but um, so if I wanted to um, open the terminal um, you could see there's Emmet in there but to open the terminal it's just control tick so the tick is right underneath the escape key. It looks kind of like a backward apostrophe. And once you're in here, you can do all of your commands. And if you've set this up with bash, it's going to take bash commands even if you're on Windows. On a Mac, it'll always be bash. And you can actually use the plus sign to open up a second bash window and a third. So you can open up multiple bash windows and then in your little terminal here. And then you can also get rid of them with this kill terminal so I can go back down and kill the terminal. So that's a, a really helpful access to the command line. And then uh, preferences. So there's a number of ways that you might want to change your setup. First of all, changing color is pretty straightforward. You just go into code and it might be a little bit different on Windows. I could you would just, but you will go to maybe file preferences, um, but you will go to code and you will under preferences, you'll see color theme and you can change to different themes using color theme. So maybe you prefer a light color like that. So you can just quickly change the entire theme using that color theme. And I think I'm normally using the dark Visual Studio. Um, settings and autosave. So autosave is also going to be underneath uh, the file. So I've got mine set on autosave. You can just toggle that on and off. I found it is kind of nice to have that autosave on because um, sometimes if you don't save, uh, if you forget to manually save and you go look at your work it looks like you didn't do anything and you'll see this X this means this is a saved file if you don't have auto save on and you make changes it'll appear as a zero and because I have auto save it's hard to ever see that zero because it always saves it but when that's a zero then you're not saved but anyway I choose to use the auto save and then you also have file settings so under preferences I mean not file settings but um, not extensions, but settings here. And they've actually provided a GUI so you can go through and look at the various settings that you have. And I'm not typically changing a lot in my setup notes in the FAQs that I've provided. I have the settings done with um, in JSON. And so I believe to get to the user settings in JSON, you would go, hey, just notice they changed something. So this is the GUI view, and this is really useful. But sometimes I like to just set things using text, and there is a JSON file, JavaScript object notation file, that makes it easy to do that. They used to have like a little dot, dot, dot that would get you there. Um, now what they want you to do is the control shift P, which is how you run commands, and do open settings JSON. So if you do that, control shift P, open settings JSON, you'll see that all of your settings are listed in this JSON file, which is basically, you're going to be learning about JavaScript objects, um, basically a JavaScript object, key value pairs, the key, would be the setting and the value would be how you want it set. So you can see that um, on the left, these are the default settings and on the right, these are changes that I've made. Um, and this is where I can put additional changes. So sometimes I like to just do my changes through JSON. It's kind of more exact to me, but certainly you can do the changes also in the GUI. 
So, um, so this is basically just a file and I'm going to close it for now. Um, but the settings, um, if you want to do things GUI wise, this works fine. User settings are going to apply to every single um, project you work on, whereas workplace settings will apply just to this single project. I'm generally just doing user settings. So um, that's the settings GUI and then the control shift P to look at the JSON, the actual string values for the settings, the autosave. And then just to note that generally the, the standard is that you use tab size tabs. You know, tabs are like give you a certain amount of spaces um, that you use two spaces for JavaScript and four for HTML. Um, that's because JavaScript can end up be, being very nested and you'll not be able to read it if it gets pushed out too far to the right. And we also always set spaces to true be, rather than having the tab character. And that just keeps everybody using the same setting. Um, Multi-cursors, these are really helpful. So this is your ability to select um, a bunch of different items on a page and modify them all at the same time. There's a couple ways to do that. So there's Control D on Windows, Command D on Mac. And let's take a look at this. So if I'm in, um, let's say I'm in this test file and I click on Meta. So it looks like I've selected them all, but it's just kind of the, the most highlighted one is what I've really selected. But um, with a Command D, I can select, I can select as many as I want just like that. So now they are all really selected. And you notice that this line here, this vertical line is pulsing. That is saying that these are all selected. And then if I change one, it's going to change them all. So that's the multi cursor. So if I, you know, backspace, they're all gone. And if I type, they all come back. So it's a way to, if you know, like say I have a bunch of P tags that I want to change to div tags, I can do that all in one change. So that's the, the single select multi cursor. There's also um, a select all. So this would be command shift L. So if I click on one of them and command shift L, it just selects all of them rather than the command D was just selecting one at a time. Okay, so multi cursor is really useful for global changes. Find and replace can be used in the same thing. So there's a there's a find in a page and a find all in, in the folder you're working on. So if I, for instance, um, do a command for me, I'm on a Mac command F, it's going to find them. And this little find box pops up. It tells me there's three of them. I can go to the next one, you know, so it's a, it's a handy tool there. If I wanted to find a, some text that occurs in all files, I can use the command shift F or control shift F in Windows. This will open up the search window here. And if I hit enter, it will find every t every instance of this text in every file. So if I just click on that, I can go find all of that. So that will search through my entire project and that can be really useful. Um, so between searching in a, within a file and searching within all files, you can also do a replace in a page and these two commands are look really different, but they do the same thing. So in Windows control H in the Mac command option F. And so what that will do if I do a command option F here, it opens up this little find and replace. So this allows you to search for an item. It shows you how many, of them there are and I'm on the second one here selected of three of them and I could replace it with you know whatever I want and I can tell it to look for uppercase or lowercase and over here uppercase lowercase and I can tell it to replace one at a time or all of them so that's also really useful All right, um, and then formatting code. So the way that I do it, there probably are a number of different ways. And if you find any better ways, please let me know. But um, I install this beautify command and lots of people are using it. And what that gives you is um, 
when you're inside your file here and you you will see this format document and it looks like there's a shortcut for that too um, but just right click format document and it will format your code for you so I really want you to do this because this makes your code a lot easier to read and you can often spot problems just by formatting in fact I think the formatter won't work it won't do anything if you have like mismatched um, tags or something like that and it works equally well in um, JavaScript as it does in uh, in, in CSS or HTML so it will it will recognize that you're in a JavaScript file and it will provide the proper formatting so if I you can see that will go that will get formatted so definitely want to emphasize the format using the formatter um, comments so you can easily comment any kind of code um, so if I'm in JavaScript, it's it's and I'm on the Mac, it's Command F, it's be Control F on Windows. It will give me the proper JavaScript comment, and it's a toggle, so I can turn it on and off. It will also recognize if I'm in HTML, it will give the proper HTML comment, and it's a toggle. So that's a really quick way, and you can select multiple lines and comment them. So really recommend using that commenter. Um, markdown, so you may have occasion to write some markdown and it provides help with that too. So if, if I open up this readme you can see this is just straight markdown. You know the kind of abbreviated opposite of markup, markdown um, uh, text, you know, where I'm using, you know, I, I set up my links using this kind of format, but it's sometimes hard to read. Well, if you right click and open preview, you can see it nicely formatted. So you can kind of, and then what I like to do sometimes is I will right click and split left, split left or right. And that'll give me this two, two forms or two sides. And that way, let's just close all this out. We'll do the open preview, drag it over here. And then I can actually look at my markdown and my the, what's going to be rendered out of it so, side by side. So I can kind of check myself as I'm writing markdown. So that comes built in. Um, IntelliSense. So um, two ways I use this a lot. This is where it can detect things for you. So if I'm writing JavaScript, um, let's say, let's close this out. And now, so right click, close all, we'll shut all this down. Um, so you can see I don't always use the keystroke. Sometimes I just use the, the simple right click functionality. Um, but if I go into JavaScript, uh, let's see, let's try a test file here. If I type in a, a JavaScript an object so window is one object in JavaScript um, and then you'll be creating your own objects you can see it shows me all of the properties and this can this is called IntelliSense it can help you to choose the right property and then it can also give you hints about what you can what are the parameters for the property um, and it shows you the return so it's like it, it detects the code that you're working on and it can help you to fill it out. Document is another one that you'll use a lot. Add event listener. And then it shows you what you want. Right now you're not going to probably understand exactly what all of these parameters are or how to interpret this, but that's what you're going to be learning. And this can prompt you for that. Um, it can also help you, uh, let's say, um, if you're in HTML, and you're dealing with adding assets to keep from making errors there. So if I say make an image, or let's see, actually, what do I have as my assets? Let's see, I don't really have a lot. I have a CSS file. Let's say I was going to add um, a CSS file in my head. So I have link and rel equals 
uh, style sheet. And then here's what it can help you with is the href equals images or it's what CSS slash and see it can tell you main oops. So I think you just want to do CSS slash and hit the tab key. So that'll keep you from writing the wrong location. And this works for images. It, it can find images if you have any. Um, and so that is uh, going to help to prevent some errors too. And um, GitHub integration. So finally, um, looking here, um, you can see these are the, if I click on this scissors looking icon, shows that four files have changed. When I click on them, it will show me what's different between what I have checked in to GitHub or to get and um, these are the changes that I've made or additions. So you can see that, you know, after I did that formatting, it changed. It shows that I've changed uh, the layout basically there. So formatting changes will show up as well as additions. In this text, I've added some of these things, text.js. I've modified those form, added some things there. So um, this is really handy, like before you check in, or if you like, if you wanted to kind of roll back some changes, you could say, well, it was working before, but now it's not working. You can come look at what you changed and maybe just remove it. I mean, there you can also do a get checkout on the file to remove the whole file, to go to roll back the whole file. But if you just want to change a little bit of it, uh, you think, well, I, I put something in there and it, it made it break. You can use this diff to, to figure that out. Finally, linting. And so linters are programs that detect problems in script languages. So in compiled languages, um, like C++, um, Java, you run a compiler and it checks for all the errors and you can't actually run the program without it compiling. But with scripted languages like JavaScript, you're, you can have errors, but you can still submit them to run and they'll just fail and cause all sorts of problems. And you'll become quite familiar with that. But linting, linters can help find problems in the scripts uh, and then alert you in your IDE. So if I look at, um, say, a JavaScript file here, and it can tell, you know, that I'm in JavaScript because of the JS extension on it. And let's say I wrote a function and I, I used the incorrect syntax. So I went like that. Okay, so first of all, I see a red squiggly. That's one indication. And you can see that it's giving me even a hint there that I left off the parentheses. But you, all, you can also look over here on the right and see red marks. So if you're seeing red marks in your JavaScript, chances are you have a JavaScript error. And you'll also see those errors in your browser console. But it's nice to be able to pick them up in your IDE. So if I just add that um, parameter list to that function, that clears up my error. So that's the linter is helping you there. And you'll see more about linters as you work with um, they can be helpful. Sometimes they can be annoying because they're telling you there are problems that may or may not be real problems, but generally they are real problems. So you want to fix linted errors, lint errors. All right, so that is um, basically an introduction to some tips and tricks on Visual Studio Code. And I'll post this, um, this sheets file up. Uh, it's like a PowerPoint file up on um, Slack so that you can refer to it. All right.